Omaha's most accurate forecast. I'm 6 News First Alert meteorologist Mallory Schnell on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Schrock Innovations presents the Midwest's number one independent computer repair company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion, Des Moines, and across the country via the Schrock desk. This is Compute This. Good morning, folks, and welcome into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with four locations to help you out when your computers are having trouble, when you're looking for that new computer. Maybe you didn't get the techie toys you wanted for Christmas, and now you have to make your techie toys last longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do at Schrock. Uh, the original Schrock Innovations in Lincoln is uh, just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road there in Lincoln. In Omaha, 168th and Burke, across the street from the Village Point Mall. In Papillion, right off the corner of 84th and Highway 370 in the Midlands Place Shopping Center. And, of course, the brand new one in Des Moines, West Des Moines, I should say, at 9500 University Avenue in West Des Moines, Iowa. Number to join us on the program this morning, 888-250-2091. Of course, as we do every week, if you call in and ask a question, make a comment, we'll put you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate, good for anything your heart desires over at the service center. We put a credit on your account and it lives there. It's beautiful. But all you have to do to be a part of the program is give us a call, ask a question, or make a comment. All right. So if you missed the show last week, guys, um, you, you missed a doozy. We, it was a really good show. Uh, we told you all about what to watch for when you install browser extensions. Um, and I know that sounds like super exciting, right? Like, ooh, browser extensions. What is that? Like hair extensions? What, eyelash extensions? Browser extensions. Um, it's different, but you know, just as beautiful, but different. Um, <laughs> so basically, uh, it's a good way to get viruses in your browser. No, I shouldn't say viruses. I should say undesired behavior or monitoring in your browsers. So only have extensions installed that you're actively using. It, and when you're done using them, disable those extensions and it'll help keep your browser safe and secure there as well. Uh, we talked about the latest security innovations coming out from our friends at Firefox. They've been a little beleaguered here. I mean, they've lost a lot of staff because they've lost a lot of funding. And their number one benefactor is, ironically, Google. Um, and if that would ever dry up, then Firefox would probably cease to exist as a browser. But in the meantime, the party goes on, right? It's like the stock market. In the meantime, the party continues. It's like Bitcoin. In the meantime, $27,000 Bitcoin this morning. So fi Firefox is keeping your uh, your privacy at center focus there uh, by introducing even more cutting edge features to keep you safe online. And we also introduced you to Kuiper, the competitor to Starlink, just in case you were worried about how you were going to afford that $1,000 Starlink receiver. Uh, Kuiper is coming along, which is Jeff Bezos's company, uh, and is uh, is supposedly going to be like, uh, they're going to have like the Amazon Basics satellite receiver. <laughs> You know, like you can buy the Sharpie for $2 a Sharpie or the Amazon's Basics Permanent Marker, which is a Sharpie, for like 27 cents. So you can buy like Elon's Starlink, you know, huge satellite. I don't know if it makes that sound. That's trademark Elon. I don't know. Uh, makes this, you know, giant satellite internet receiver or the Amazon Basics one, which is made in China and slightly more plastic and uh, half the price. So it's going to be pretty fun to watch that play out in the next year. Now, speaking of uh, playing out here, you guys, if you want to, you can actually watch the show live on Facebook at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. That's facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations, where we're broadcasting live this morning. Uh, we do that every week as well. You can also watch archive shows on Facebook. I know that many of you, or some of you at least, uh, choose not to use Facebook and never have used Facebook. Some of you are choosing to use it less often now than you had before November. Uh, I get that too. Uh, if you don't want to do it on Facebook, you can always go to our website at schrockinnovations.com where you can pick up uh, the, the show there if you do miss any important parts of it. Now, today on the program, uh, we've got uh, literally the last call for the holiday special. So I think we have five total units left, so we're going to talk about that briefly. Um, the bad guys are using VPNs too. Makes them hard to track. Unless, of course, the U.S. government tracks down the VPNs they use and rolls them up so that they're nowhere to be found anymore. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, what happens if you were using one of these VPNs. You're probably a criminal. But if you were using one of these VPNs, they're gone now. Uh, VPNs are entities, too, I guess is the lesson from that story. They can be taken down and their data can be searched to determine who did what when. They keep a record. Uh, your online search history could be part of your credit score. Yeah, 
uh, talk about Chinese social credit, right? Uh, what you search for and how you search for it could be used to give or deny you credit going forward. We're going to tell you what the, the backstory is behind this. And of course, you know, it's one of those things that like on the surface is like a really good idea. Like I could see this working. And then your mind wanders to a darker place and you're like, hmm, I don't know if that's such a good idea. And also, uh, we're going to take a look back on the year 2020. I know that every show is doing that right now, and it's kind of cliche. Um, this year has been a challenge for so many people. And my wife and I took a moment um, th this holiday season to sit back and just say, wow, look at what our family came through this year. Um, and, you know, take a little bit of pride from the, uh, you know, the, the sacrifices, if you will, or the, or the challenges that you had to overcome. Things that you would have never, a year ago, you would have thought, two years ago, you'd have thought, <laughs> you know, um, what, this is crazy. This could never happen, especially in America. This could never happen. And look at where we're at now. Um, so we're going to take a look back on that as well. Now, I want to remind everybody that next week is going to be the Thor Stradamus show. So Thor Stradamus is this mystic weirdo guy. Uh, I mean, we've we known each other for a long time, so I can get away with saying that. But he's, he's a little odd, and he makes predictions. And... We started covering – I just – guys, I try to bring you what's current. I do that in the show. I do that in the Aftershock. We talk about some things that don't necessarily you know, revolve around technology directly but are still important. Uh, and Thorstradamus' predictions, when I realized that his predictions have been 100 percent right for well, – I've known him for 21 years um, – I had to bring him on the show. Of course, he won't come on the show because he's a nut job. So he won't come on the show, but he will give me his predictions and allow me to share them with you on the program. So next week, we will have our annual Thorstradamus show where we go back in time and we look over the predictions that Thorstradamus made last January. And then we see if they came true. So that's going to be pretty interesting this year. And then, of course, he's going to make his predictions for 2021 as well. So don't want to miss that program next week, Sunday morning at 7, for the Thorstradamus edition of Compute This. 888-250-2091 is the number to join us on the program. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is literally the last call for the holiday specials, guys. Uh, I believe we have two laptops left and three desktops. That was my check as of last night. Uh, I don't think we sold any overnight, but uh, if you've been kicking the tires and thinking about it, maybe you were hoping you get one for Christmas. That that was really brilliant this year. So, you know, my wife was opening some of her gifts under the tree, and she got a particular thing that she had been wanting. Um, it was like a stocking cap or something. It was something really basic. Uh, and uh, she said, you know, she was just like, "Wow, this is awesome!" And it just hits me like I don't know. After twenty years, this hasn't hit me before. Maybe I'm just thick like that. Uh, <laughs> But I'm like, somewhere today, somebody is unwrapping one of our computers under a Christmas tree, and they are stupid thrilled to get it. And that just that gave me the feels. I was I was oh that's so nice. So anyway, it was it was fun. So you know we uh, <laughs> the last five remaining basically three desktops, two laptops. Uh, we're pulling down the displays effective today. So you if you come into the service center, you may not see one on display. Because there's no point of having them on display. They're going to be probably sold out by the end of the day Monday. Um, so anyway, if you were interested in one, now's the time to act on it. They are still on the website. You can check them out there at Uh The holiday special laptop this year was really cool. Um, the, the touchpad, you know, I had to uh, – ironically, you know, one of the perks of being me is every year I get a new laptop, right? I mean, I get a new holiday special. Somebody's got to test these things out, right? Um, this year I didn't because we were really unsure how many we were, were going to be able to get. Uh, so I couldn't take one for myself at this point. Now the displays are coming down. We'll see what happens. But um, I ended up get, being able to, uh, to do a new build on one uh, in, in the Des Moines Service Center for a customer. And as I'm installing the software and using the touchpad, oh, my gosh, it's so, so butter smooth. Um, just, you know, I, it's weird. Like when you get a new laptop, they have a feel to them. Like you ever get a really cheap laptop and it just kind of feels plasticky. It just feels junky. Like when you depress the keys, they kind of, they wobble a little or just, it doesn't feel really solid. And then you've had like the opposite computer, which is like, you know, 500 pounds and built like a tank made of all the aluminum and metal you can possibly squeeze into a laptop. And those feel like you're carrying a brick of like lead around. This thing is just comfortably perfect in the middle it's got a it's got a ruggedized construction internally so it's actually got some metal inside it's not all plastic um so it's got a good feel and a good heft to it but it's so thin that that heft isn't overwhelming 
It's like carrying a, a solid piece of glass or like a tablet or something. And then the touch screen on the touchpad, uh, it's, the touchpad is literally a four inch touch screen. And so getting used to it, it took me about maybe two minutes to really get you. I know it took me two minutes. It might take you four. It's okay. But it, I mean, it took me a two minutes to get used to it. So that, okay, I know that the three finger, if you got one of the holiday specials and you're trying to figure out how do I get it to touchpad mode, it's a three finger tap. You go tap and all of a sudden you're in touchpad mode. Uh, so, it, I mean, just little things like that that you figure out. And the more I figured out, the more I loved it. The screen, the blue light filtered screen was brilliant. Oh, my gosh. The IR camera did so good. I was turning the lights on and off to see how well the camera did. I was p- literally playing with someone's Christmas present. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that, Thor. Shelly up front's like, Thor, quit flickering the lights. It's not a rave. Just get it done. I'm like, fine, I'll get it done. Uh, but no, it was just just an amazing laptop. So I would encourage you to take a look at those if you're looking for a laptop. Desktop is intended to be a full-on, all-out, everything you could possibly need to run a home office Zoom station computer. So it's literally got the tower, the blue light filtered monitor for extended time in front of it, the wireless keyboard and mouse to get the cords off the desk, got a webcam on it so that you can do all those Zoom calls and conferences, um, the, uh, the speakers, three-piece speaker set, so that you can actually have some ambient music in the room. The the speakers and the monitors are, are good enough, you know, but they're not they're not great. You're not going to get good good sound out of them. And when you're dealing with a Zoom call and you don't want to wear a set of headphones, you got to have a decent set of speakers. So all in all, the whole thing comes together into the holiday special desktop. Uh, like I said, there's three of those left, and they're just phenomenal. The, the Ryzen seven processor, 32 gigabytes of memory, a one terabyte solid state hard drive. Just a phenomenal computer that you can check out over at schrockinnovations.com. 888-250-2091. One of, the, uh, one of the cool things that I wanted to mention is we are still hiring in Des Moines. We're looking for junior technicians in Des Moines. Uh, so if you know someone in the West Des Moines or Des Moines metro area who is a, a technician or someone who aspires to become a technician, obviously you have to have some aptitude for the job. You know, we, we get a lot of people who are like fry cooks that apply for junior technician jobs. And you know, that's okay. There are some pretty smart fry cooks out there. You know, one of the one of the weird things you wouldn't think, um, people in the automotive industry are stupid good at fixing computers. And it, it's the same problem solving skill set. What's that funny noise? What's that rattle? Why is that light on? And then you trace the problem back. It's the same set of problem solving skills. Uh, so when we get people that, you know, that work at O'Reilly's, for example, we look at them <laughs> because they're they're usually they work out really well, especially if they have an aptitude for it or at least a background in building or fixing their own stuff. We can usually translate that into a really good technician that we develop over the course of a year or two. Uh, so it, it works out really well. So we have uh, openings in our Des Moines Service Center right now. We also have openings in our Papillion Service Center. We're looking for a senior technician as well as a junior technician there. We literally had one of our newbies. And this is why we have a 90-day probationary period, guys. Some people are cut out for this and some people aren't. He quit on Christmas Day through a text message to his district manager. Now, Parker, being the, the kind soul that he is, he didn't even tell me about it until the day after Christmas. <laughs> He's like, let Thor have the day off, you know, whatever. Uh, but, uh, but oh, my gosh, I was like, really, son? I mean, you know, I can't say you were working out, but, you know, <laughs> we that's the thing. You guys, we go through a lot of people to get one solid tech. One of the, one of the names that you recognize when you call into Schrock and work to have one of those, we have to go through three people. Um, because some people are cut out for it and some people are, are just not. We don't usually talk about the ones that aren't on the radio. I'm not going to say his name, but it was kind of like, you know, that's what the probationary period is for. It's a time in that first 90 days where the employee can say, you know what, this isn't working out for me. I don't, I don't want to stay here anymore. And they don't have to give two weeks notice. We just didn't think he'd do it on Christmas Day. That was kind of weird. Uh, in the middle of the holiday special construction season, in the middle of the warehouse, <sighs> you know, <laughs> come on. Um, but yeah, we actually called Robert back in. Uh, you might remember Robert. He worked in the Papillion Service Center a couple of years back, and he's uh, moved on. He works for Google now, actually. Uh, and I said, hey, Robert, bud, you know, you looking for a couple extra hours to pay some Christmas bills? You know, I could use you in the Papillion Service Center. You know, no customer stuff, no front-facing stuff, just need someone to actually assemble computers. And he's like, I'm there. This is awesome. So it's going to be like uh, the best of tour. It's going to be great. Uh, so we'll have to get our Swedish death metal on. That's what he would listen to. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know there was such a thing as Swedish death metal. My name is Thor, and I don't know there's Swedish death metal. I guess weird. But uh, anyway, uh, it's going to be fun over in the service center. So if you know someone who's looking, please uh, have them turn in an application. We have jobs posted on Indeed.com as well as at SchrockInnovations.com. You can scroll to the bottom of the page for employment opportunities there. 
888-250-2091. We're going to take our first break in the program. But when we come back, guys, the, the bad guys are concerned about their privacy as well, probably for different reasons than you, right? So <laughs> they use VPNs. They, they try to keep people from figuring out where they're at. So then we started learning about all the different aspects of a VPN. How many hops is your VPN? I don't even know how many hops mine is. They don't advertise it, so I'm guessing it's not great. But apparently five hops is the gold standard for cyber criminals. Uh, so in other words, every time they take an action or click on something, it gets bounced between five different geographic locations before it goes and does what it's going to do, making it virtually impossible to trace it back. Um, this is how, this is why we don't know if North Korea did something or Russia did something or China did something. Is it fancy bear? I don't know if fancy bear hacked the election. Is it, is it, was it China's a ATP or APT group? Uh, I don't know. We don't know. What was it? That's why, because they're VPNing all over the place. And we're going to tell you what the U S government is doing about it coming up next on compute this. Today's fragile computers need maintenance more than ever. Your computer needs a maintenance checkup every six months to last beyond its 18-month expected lifespan. Some people like desktops for their power and upgradability, but nothing rivals a laptop for computing on the go. But why should you have to sacrifice performance for portability? The innovators at Schrock want our customers to have it all. So we created a new kind of laptop, the Solid State Laptop from Schrock Innovations. Solid State Laptops are built using the same frame and main boards as regular laptops, but we've removed half of the moving parts while more than doubling the computer's speed. The result? Laptops that boot to Windows in six seconds or less, respond instantly to your commands, and can survive drops that put most laptops into the data recovery lab. Starting at only $4.99, Solid Solid State laptops give you speed, reliability, durability, and performance for the same price most people pay for a cheap disposable laptop. The next time you're looking for a laptop, check out the Solid State laptops at schrockinnovations.com or visit any of our service centers. Simple, solid, fast technology is what we do at Schrock. Compute this Pro Tip 299. There are enough mothballed computers in U.S. homes to give one to every man, woman, and child in the country. Many of these computers find their way into landfills where they can leak cadmium, lithium, and other nasty chemicals into the groundwater. Schrock Innovations is very proud of the fact that we recycle more e-waste every year than we create. You can drop off any old or broken computer equipment to our service centers at any time, free of cost. We only charge $15 just for monitors because they are especially difficult to process. No appointment is required, and we accept all computer-related equipment like printers, keyboards, speakers, and accessories. Additionally, the rare earth elements in computers can be recycled right here in the U.S. to reduce our reliance on supplies from foreign countries. Take a moment, drop off your old computer equipment today, and Schrock will make sure it's properly recycled and put to good use right here in the U.S. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. All righty, folks. Welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Number to join us on the program this morning. If you ask a question or make a comment, we'll get you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate, 888-250-2091. You know, a funny thing came across my cell phone this week. Um, a winter weather advisory. You probably just got one on your phone, too. But a winter weather advisory. Warning. The National Weather Service has issued a winter weather advisory. Heavy, I mean, I mean heavy, snow accumulating up to one inch. What? Heavy snow, one inch. Hmm, big, big little war, civil war, military intelligence. Like, I don't understand. Heavy snowfall accumulating to an inch. Is it all going to come down at once? Like, <laughs> yeah. like Merry Christmas <laughs> um, keep an extra keep a flashlight in your vehicle and an extra meal for the inch of snow and I was like I was literally making fun of this uh, the snow that we got and then of course I had to drive back from Des Moines in the middle of that and I'm like okay the winter weather advisory could have said caution whiteout conditions whiteout blizzard like conditions probable 
Okay, I get it. Then I'll have a flashlight and an extra meal. I got it. You know, but don't warn me about an inch of snow because I'm I'm climbing into that four wheel drive F one fifty and I'm like, hold my diet Pepsi. You know, <laughs> let's take on this inch of snow. It's going to be great. Yeah, watch out for that one. 888-250-2091 is the number to give us a call. Ask a question, make a comment. We'll put you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Want to give a quick shout out to those of you who are watching on Facebook. Good morning, Richard. We appreciate you being here. Greg, good to have you. Top fan, Mary. Good to see you, Mary. All right, Roger there. Don, good to have you. Mitch, top fan. Thanks for being here. All righty. And then Ronnie. Ronnie there. Ronnie asks, would it, would it, Oh, I'm sorry. Wondering if I need a tune-up on my desktop. I keep getting a low disk warning. All right. So maintenance checkups, it's ideal to do them every six months, okay? We're talking ideal. We're talking like you should change the filters in your furnace every 30 days. You should change the oil in your car every, you know, what is it, three three months. I almost said three years. Every three years or, or 30,000 miles or whatever, 3,000 miles. Now the truck just tells you when to change it and you can go longer. I don't understand. But there's a schedule. That's the point, right? There's a schedule for getting your computer maintenance to, and that's every six months. Now, if you push it to a year, is is anything going to explode in the computer? Probably not. But if you do have a budding small problem, it's like when you – okay, let me use the dental analogy here because this is one I can relate to. Nobody likes to go to the dentist, right? And so – this year, you know, with the pandemic and everything else, my appointments kept getting canceled or I had to cancel for some reason. So I haven't been to the dentist in eight months. So it's time for a six month checkup, right? So when I go in for my cleaning, it, if, you know, if I go in at six months, they will clean my teeth and I won't get cavities. If I wait till eight or nine months, then I go in all of a sudden now I've got like little pre cavities that need to be like drilled and filled before they get really bad. And so you don't want to get into that position with your computer because uh, you don't want us drilling on your computer. It's not good. But, uh, you know, basically when you when you get into that position where you have a small problem that would have been inexpensive to solve if you would have just solved it at the time, but you let it go for a while, then it becomes a bigger issue. Now, when you're getting a low disk warning, a lot of times what that is is there's a, a little partition on your hard drive that's intended to be the recovery partition. And in some cases, that partition becomes visible. It can be It can be viewed on the computer. And when it is viewable, the the partition, people tend to save stuff there. And then it gets full. So because it's only a tiny little 15 gig part, it's like a flash drive. Uh, and so it starts to get full and then you get low disk warnings. And it's just because somebody saved something in the wrong spot. And so we can fix that pretty easily for you. Uh, we just have to take care of that. And we just move whatever's in that partition into the regular drive. Now, on the other hand, if your hard drive is getting full, that's something different entirely that needs to be taken care of by either of course, eliminating some files or putting a bigger hard drive in. But Ronnie, if you want to swing that in, we'd be happy to take a look at uh, at that in the service center and uh, make sure that you're good to go. Number to join us on the program, 888-250-2091. And just like Ronnie did, you can join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations as well. All right. So the bad guys are using VPNs to mask their evil dastardly deeds as they make a million dollars. So why aren't why isn't anyone doing anything about it? Well, that's a great question because when you think about it, the bad guys are using VPNs, right? And you say, why won't they do anything about it? Because you want somebody to step in and figure out who the bad guys are and what they're doing that's bad and then take them out, right? That's the same procedure, though, that would blow up your VPN. If the government has the ability to do that, it would give you the same the same outcome for your VPN. They'd be able to see everything that you're doing on your VPN and go forward. This is why we've discussed in the past, many of the free VPNs are actually state sponsored. So they're sponsored by any number of different states. Um, so if you're using a free VPN, it's not the most secure solution. These VPNs were not free. They were very expensive, actually, uh, for what they were being charged for. Um, let me see if I can scroll down and find out what they were. It was ridiculous, the amount they were paying per session. Um, for these VPNs. But basically what was happening is these bad guys are using their VPNs to hide their online activity. And these uh, VPNs were only being used by, it was $1.30 a day to $190 a year. So to give you an idea, I pay about $99 a year for my VPN, for ExpressVPN. Um, and, you know, it can be debatable whether I actually need it or not, but I figured why not. 
Um, so these guys are paying up to twice or three times that just to have this five layers of, and I'm like, I wonder if my express VPN is giving me five layers of protection. Am I, is it like protect you like a cyber criminal? You know, I mean, it could be a marketing campaign, right? So these were mostly advertised heavily on Russian and English speaking underground cyber crime forums. So if you have one of these VPNs, you might not want to admit it to your friends because that means you frequent English and Russian speaking underground cyber crime forums. Uh, <laughs> and you don't want to do that. Uh, the services have been active for more than a decade. So this has been, uh, you're just now hearing about VPNs and you're saying, maybe I should get one. These guys got a VPN a decade ago because they were that serious about hiding their masking, their online activity and making sure that they are not, uh, you know, being detected in their dastardly deeds. Um, but basically the uh, domains were calling the, the ones that were taken down, the three that were eliminated were insorg.org, insorg.org, safeinet.com, and safeinet.net. The United States government seized the domains of these three service providers uh, and all of their assets basically and are eliminating their, their activity. So the fact that the government knew where these people were coming from tells me that uh, they probably have known for a while what they were doing, and they were probably watching what was going through the VPNs to try to track things back. And then once the bad guys figured out their VPNs were compromised, they rolled them up and said, okay, that intelligence source is gone now. So uh, good, yay, yay, good guys. Um, bad that, you know, there is a way to roll up a VPN and, and compromise it and figure out what's going on behind it. And that's what the U.S. Department of Justice and Europool did this week for those three VPN providers. All right, of course, we're going to take our bottom of the hour break. But uh, when we come back, your online search history could be used as part of your credit score now. Uh, so we're going to tell you what what the logic is behind this. What What's the good side to this first, right? Because not every everything isn't always evil and dastardly, right? So there's a good there's a there's a reason that this could be a good thing, but there's also some concerns that it's like the first baby step to a social credit score like they have in China, where you can't board an airplane unless you've got these boxes checked and you're vaccinated. Uh, and so we're trying to we're trying to get to the bottom of it, but we're going to tell you what's going on with the search history credit score. Is Google going to determine your credit score? I don't know. We're going to tell you all about it. Stick with us through the break. Coming up next on Compute This. Schrock Innovations can't teleport technicians to you, but online help is only a click away with the Schrock Desk. Subscribe today and get unlimited help whenever you need it. In 1798, Eli Whitney's Connecticut Musket Factory was the first business in North America to use replaceable parts in a firearm. Before Eli's factory, if your musket broke, you had to send it away to an expert gunsmith for repairs or just toss it and buy a new musket. Technology manufacturing has come a long way since the 18th century, but you wouldn't know it by looking at today's big box store computers. Dell, HP, Sony, and other manufacturers continue to take away your freedom to upgrade and repair your computer by eliminating expansion and repair options. Some desktops are even powered by a tiny laptop adapter. Schrock Innovations believes in Eli Whitney's idea of interchangeable and replaceable components, and that's why our custom-built modular computers last longer and cost less to repair than computers you see at big box stores. Ask your friends and family how often they replace their box store computers and they'll probably tell you every couple of years. And what do they do with the old machines? They just get thrown out like broken muskets. Imagine a place where your computer's problems can be fixed quickly and inexpensively. Imagine keeping your computer for six years or more. You are imagining the kind of computers we build every day at Schrock Innovations. Our modular systems last longer, perform faster, and cost less over the long term than anything you can buy at a big box store. While the talented technicians at Schrock Innovations can't make you a musket even if they tried, our commitment to the freedom offered by modular computers is the modern-day extension of Eli's innovative musket factory. We think Eli Whitney would be proud, and you can take pride in owning a small piece of American innovation, the modular computer from Schrock Innovations. Compute this Pro Tip 843. Of all computer failures, the scariest and most expensive is the hard drive. But there are some steps you can take to save money and save your data before it's too late. Detecting failures early is important, so install a free utility like Drive Advisor from driveadvisor.com to monitor your hard drive's health and receive warnings when there's a problem. But most of all, hard drive failures happen slowly, so early detection is key to reducing the repair bill. Second, if your hard drive makes any unusual noises, immediately turn off your computer and do not turn it on again. These issues are physical problems, and the more you try to use it, the worse 
the damage becomes. Remember that most computer repair shops do not have the specialized equipment needed to recover data from a failed drive. Never open your drive or allow anyone else to do so. Open drives always cost more to recover. Schrock does not charge for data recovery evaluations and quotes, so let the local pros look at your drive before you make any recovery decisions. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. News. I'm Karen McHugh. Europeans have begun to receive their coronavirus vaccinations. Doctors, nurses and the elderly rolled up their sleeves across the European Union to receive the first doses of the coronavirus vaccine Sunday in a symbolic show of unity and moment of hope. A few countries started giving doses out a day early in a coordinated rollout for a block of 27 nations and nearly 450 million people. Fox's Pam Puso. Numerous tips are helping to guide investigators looking into the Christmas Day RV explosion in Nashville. Authorities were seen collecting evidence from a home outside of the city. It's unclear what led them there, but a picture of the property of May of 2019 shows an RV parked in the backyard. It's similar to the one used in Friday's bombing. More than 500 tips have come in so far. Fox's Jackie Ibanez. America is listening to Fox News. Now, the News Radio 1110 KFAB Weather Watch. We'll start off in the 20s this morning with high temperatures this afternoon just topping out in the mid to possibly upper 30s. Clouds stick around for most of the day. A few sprinkles or flurries are possible as well. Winds will really gust by the afternoon up to 35 miles per hour. Overnight lows in the teens. With Omaha's most accurate forecast, I'm 6 News First Alert Meteorologist Mallory Schnell on News Radio 1110 KFAB. All righty, folks. Thanks for sticking with us through the break there, and welcome back into Compute This. My name's Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company, where we do a whole lot more than fixing computers and selling new ones. We do data recovery, so if your computer, your, if your hard drive dies, or your camera dies, or your camera card goes bad, and you need to get the information back, we can do that at Schrock. We have a lab in our Omaha Service Center that has all the equipment. We're going to talk about this later in the program, too. has all the equipment in it that we need to achieve those repairs for you. So pretty amazing stuff there. Uh, we have a corporate services division that's able to help out your businesses, uh, typically uh, purposefully designed for smaller businesses, uh, $275 per computer per year, per year to maintain your business technology. Um, compare that to what everybody else charges and you'll understand, you know, why Schrock is different, why we're, why we're better in a lot of ways. Uh, now, that doesn't mean we're perfect for every business. So there are some times where we say, you know what, this probably isn't a good fit for us, but uh, thanks for thinking of us. Thanks for approaching us. We appreciate it. Uh, golly, folks, uh, new computers, computer repairs, uh, software development. A lot of people, we don't talk about this very often because it's such a uh, – you in the past, in past years, it's such a weird thing that, that – uh, yeah, you need some software developed. It's like, hey, you need some fish. You know, it's like you just don't hear that. You know what? What? Um, but this year, if you didn't have access to a software developer and you were a small business owner, especially if you were a restaurant, you were up a creek without a paddle. And having access to people who can create software and make things happen and automate things is the difference between businesses that succeed and grow in the 21st century and businesses that are stagnant. And that we see it every day. You know, what we've been doing for the last 20 years works fine. We're not going to change it now. And that works great until one of your competitors does. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, these young whippersnappers, I, I have this call twice a week. These young companies are coming up behind us and just eating our lunch and we're trying to figure out how this happened or what's going on. I'm like, well, they're using technology. They can do twice as much work with half as much input as you can. So, yeah, that gives them additional dollars for marketing, and they can do all kinds of crazy things. When you're, If you're saying, I don't know how they could possibly afford to do that, it's because they're automating a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And they're doing that through software. Uh, so we can help your business do that as well. So give us a call over at Schrock Interactive if that's something that's uh, interesting to you. And when I say call us at Schrock Interactive, you can call any of the service centers. They'll transfer you over to uh, Annette over at Schrock Interactive to assess your needs and figure out exactly what we uh, what we need to do to get you up and running. All right. So, guys, number to join us on the program this morning is 888-250-2091. And that's what Julie has done. Julie, welcome to the program. How can I help you today on Compute This? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have uh, one of your computers, and I have your secure updater. Perfect. One of the items that's checked is um, CCleaner. Yes. 
And could you explain what that is and how it works? Yeah, yeah. So um, the C stands for a certain four-letter word that rhymes with excrement. And it cleans that off your computer. Uh, so basically what CCleaner does is it's a safe cleaning tool. What we've seen a lot at Schrock is everybody wants to install the driver optimizer, the driver updater, the driver do-it-yourselfer, Widgimawalt, my registry cleaner, my hard drive cleaner. And the, everybody thinks they need this whole bevy of utilities uh, that if you hear about this, oh, there's a new utility, I think I should get that. Well, CCleaner does all that stuff. It's absolutely free and it's safe. We even use it in our service center sometimes for computers. So obviously the first thing it does is it cleans junk off your computer. So when you run a CCleaner scan, it goes through the entire computer and anything it can delete, search history, uh, temporary files from old Windows update installations. The first time you run that thing, you get a ton of, a ton of, of hard drive space back. Uh, so Ronnie, who is messaging us on uh, Facebook this morning, run CCleaner. See if it gets you any space back and gets rid of that low disk alert message. Although the problem is, is if you do that, eventually you're going to run out of space. You know, it can only clean up the junk so many times and eventually you just got too much stuff. Uh, but basically you can buy yourself a little time by running that CCleaner. There's also tools, uh, optional tools that you can choose on the left-hand side menu to do things like registry cleaner and things like that, uh, which are, it's again, a safe registry cleaner. So it's not going to be like one of these, you know, cleanmyregistry.com and you don't know what it's doing to your computer. CCleaner is safe and we recommend it for people who are, are there are some people who just want to have utilities to run. They just, they, they want utilities. So if you, if you're one of those people that wants a utility, use CCleaner and it'll work out perfectly for you. The only utility that I don't want you to touch is the drive wiper utility for obvious reasons. Um, that one, a one wrong click and, uh, yeah, you could, uh, you could wipe your drive like with a cloth and it will be very, very clean. <laughs> Uh, so you don't want to go down that road. Uh, so leave the drive wiper utility alone, but all the others feel free to play around with. You can't hurt the computer. Okay. I, I'm getting the impression that even though this is checked, it's not automatic. It's something I'm going to have to do independently. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. It, it runs all the time on your computer. You probably have a little icon down there by the clock and you may see a thought bubble pop up from time to time saying, hey, we could clean up 597 gigabytes of stuff off your hard drive if you ran us today. But you still have to initiate the run. And that's one of the things we like about it. It's not soaking up your computer's resources, constantly cleaning up after you at every turn. It's something you can choose to run. Uh, to give you an idea, you could run it once every six months and be just fine. So there's really no need to, to be continuously you know, sweeping up behind you every time you do something. The other problem is, Sometimes those temporary files that are cookies and things like that that are saved to your computer serve a function. And if something is coming along behind you and constantly sweeping them out, you know, you're adding stuff to your shopping cart and then it's gone. That's because the cookie got deleted. And who deleted the cookie? Well, shoot, you can't run a, a disk cleanup uh, in the middle of an online shopping session. You, you don't want to do that. And so having okay. it be something that you trigger on your own is ideal because you're just human nature. You're going to do that during downtime. Okay. Um, I see I have a CCleaner icon on my desktop, which, yep. since it's a computer from you, I guess you guys must have put there, but <laughs> I just didn't ever know what it was for. Yeah, well, that's, that's what it does. We don't install it by default, so my guess is somewhere along the way you may have picked it up, or maybe we installed it to do a maintenance checkup in the service center. That could have been possible as well. Uh, and once Secure Updater saw that you had it installed, it said, okay, she wants this program, so we keep it installed. Uh, and we make sure it gets updated so that you can stay safe. Okay, so at, at any time I want to run it, I just click on that icon? Yeah, you double-click on it, and there'll be a big blue button that's like says Clean Up, and you just click on that, and it'll go through and do everything for you. Okay, all right. All righty. Thank you. Hey, thank you for the call, Julie. We appreciate it. See, guys, it's that easy. That wasn't hard, and that's probably – I probably answered a question for a bunch of people. Some people out there like, get, give, me, give me the pen, give me the pen. Ccleaner.com, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ccleaner.com, by the way. It's piriform.com, but the program name is ccleaner. Thanks for the call, Julie. We appreciate it. Now, the social credit score situation, you've heard of the, the social credit score from China. Now there is a possibility that your online search history could be used, not just your online search history, but as a component of your credit score, right? So the idea here is right now, especially in the pandemic, the normal models of how we score credit are broken down. Let me give you an example of me. So 
I probably run fifty thousand dollars a month through credit cards. Run them up, pay them off. Run them up, pay it off. Run them up, pay it off. I get lots of Shields rewards points. Going to get me a new treadmill next year. Uh, and Lord knows I need it. Um, so when you look at my credit score, you can see, wow, he, every month he's got like a $50,000 balance he's carrying. And you look at my income and you're like, that income doesn't justify a $50,000 credit balance on there. So he's, you know, he, we shouldn't give him a loan. We shouldn't refinance his house. His credit looks bad. They don't take into account the fact that they pay it off every month. They just look at the ba- the average daily balance and they say, there it is. Um, but if you look at me as a whole person, you'll see that Thor always has the latest flagship phone. Thor has a really nice holiday special computer that he uses for you know online stuff. Um, he purchases an, ab- an obscene amount of things online. Um, wow, look at that. He also owns a business. And they could determine all of that from my search history. And when they look at that in my search history and they apply those those factors to my credit facts, everything makes a lot more sense. And all of a sudden, people that are farmers that have a real similar situation all of a sudden might have access to capital they wouldn't have access to before or currently. Uh, people who are uh, lower income people that might uh, that might carry a higher balance and have a lower income. The, the, the math doesn't work out. Your debt to income ratio, right? You can either reduce the debt or increase the income. Well, if you can't increase your income, you can't reduce your debt. So you're just stuck. Well, if you're just stuck, but then again, we look at you as a whole person and we find out that you're very responsible with how you do spend your money. You know, maybe you're on a fixed income. And so you account for every penny that you get. And yeah, you have some debt because, you know, the, the furnace broke or the air conditioner pooped out on you or the car broke down or the water heater started leaking and you had an unexpected expense. That does, But you're, you're servicing the debt. You're paying it down slowly, but you're paying it down. And you might be a good credit risk for somebody else to look at if you wanted to get some credit, right? So that's the good side of this. It could really open up credit markets for people that wouldn't have access to them before. Now, the dark side of this is who is going to be providing the information that's going to impact your credit score. Now, the problem here is, you know, right now your credit score is imposed upon you by three different rating agencies that you have no control direction, you know, you can't appeal it. It, it is what it is. There's factors you can you can game the system and game the math a little bit. It's kind of like SEO work, but you know, that's all you can really do. We know these things impact your score and there's the formula. So, what could someone like a Google do if they were able to selectively submit information about your search history? There's no laws that say they have to submit everything. There's, you know, this is our information. We collect it. Uh, we have the right to give it, sell it, or do whatever we want with it, however we want with it. So you can't tell us that we did anything wrong by only telling you know, the credit rating agencies about all the times you wanted to buy a Lamborghini and none of the times that you were, you know, saving money by buying the Campbell's generic soup instead of the Campbell's soup, you know, that, that you know, won't go through. So the challenge that you have here is, uh, this is called, uh, uh, financial tech or FinTech and the, the distributed financial market right now is blowing up the world. We talked a little bit about that on the aftershock last week, talked about BlockFi. I cannot believe how many emails I got asking me for that BlockFi link. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the idea here is fine. Technology is changing finance and banks are getting written out of the picture and they have to find a way to stay relevant. And so now you're talking about like literally in, in Europe, they're saying we're going to need to have a digital Euro because if, if other pure com- countries go with digital currency, People may choose to not have euros. They may choose to have digital currency instead, and they may choose a digital dollar or a Bitcoin or an Ethereum token or whatever else, whoever else has a digital currency instead of a euro. Uh, It's a real concern. So now everybody's kind of jumping on the bandwagon. We'll talk more about that in the aftershock because, you know, cryptocurrency is one of those things that you either really interested in it or you're not. And so I don't want to take up a ton of time on the show, but that's the same thing here. This is just another branch of that, how your search injury injury, search history in your browser and the types of technology you use talk a lot about who you are as a person. So that might be another reason to get rid of that old flip phone. You know, <laughs> this guy, well, I don't know. I, maybe you're more frugal if you still use a flip phone. Maybe they give you a bigger loan. I don't know. All right. We've got to take a break here. Final break of the program. When we come back, guys, the uh, 
the look back on the year. We're going to do a quick uh, rundown of some of the things that have gone over this year. And as I was making out this list, I I couldn't believe it. Like as I'm filling it out, like, wow, we did actually a lot. Also, Steve, Hubert, and Bill, your calls coming up next on Compute This. If you can dream it, Schrock Interactive's website developers can make it happen. Refresh your website, automate sales and marketing, and grow your business today with Schrock Interactive. Every person listening to this broadcast has either experienced data loss or knows someone who has. When you think about it, you have a lot more data stored in many more places than you'd like to admit. Have you downloaded those videos from your phone, backed up the pictures on your iPad, or even tackled that sometimes daunting task of backing up your entire computer's hard drive? Most people just don't back up their stuff. And that's why Schrock Innovations has one of the most advanced data recovery centers in the Midwest. Equipped with the latest DDI data imaging devices, state-of-the-art custom recovery software, and Omaha's best data recovery technicians, Schrock Innovations has a 96.8% success rate when recovering data from damaged hard drives, flash drives, camera cards, and more. We all know we should back up our data, but if you are ever caught in a data loss nightmare, call the experts at Schrock Innovations to get your data back right where it belongs, safe and backed up on a stable hard drive. Compute this Pro Tip 578. Technology is constantly changing, so how can you tell when the time has come to recycle your old outdated computer and invest in a new one? Experts have rules of thumb and formulas, but Schrock believes the answer is simple. You should replace your old computer when it can no longer do the things you need in a secure way. For example, you should not be using operating systems like Windows XP or Vista because they're no longer maintained by Microsoft and they're not secure. And if your computer cannot run Windows 10, it's probably time to begin saving for a replacement. If your existing computer requires of repair and that cost is 50% or more of the cost of a new computer, it might be time to consider a replacement. But keep in mind, additional costs like data transfers and important software you have to upgrade like genealogy software or Quicken. And also keep in mind that modern computers are engineered to last 18 months for a normal user. And don't worry, you are considered a normal user. Schrock modular PCs and solid-state laptops are specifically designed to last four to six years for that same normal user, saving your family money and time. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. All righty, folks. Welcome back in. Final segment of the program. I want to make sure I mention that we will be doing an after Schrock segment after the program on Facebook. You can watch it live, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations, where you can check that out. Uh, during the aftershock this week, well, we're going to have to talk about Bitcoin. We're just going to have to. $27,160 a coin right now, up 9.6% in the last 24 hours. This thing is on a tear, and there are some real reasons why that's happening, uh, real reasons that are concerning. So we're going to tell you about that. Uh, also, we're going to answer any questions you might have during the aftershock as well. But in the meantime, Steve, welcome to the program. How can I help you on Compute This today? Uh, yes. Uh, I have a question about my uh, secure updater okay. um, icon. Gotcha. It's it, it always shows up black, yep. but I... It, does that mean it's not working okay. or that it's working and it's just sleeping? That's right. There's two uh, There's two icons for Secure Updater. There's the icon down in the lower right-hand corner by the clock. That icon will change colors and tell you what's going on with the, with the program. The icon that you're seeing on the desktop, the one that you would double-click on to launch the program if it didn't automatically launch, that icon always stays the same color because it's, it's just a picture. It's an icon file. So it doesn't actually change colors based on what's going on with Secure Updater. So that icon, you can actually delete that one if you want. You don't actually need it. Uh, the one you're concerned about is down in the lower right-hand corner by the clock. It will be red if there's a problem, something that needs to be updated but can't be. It'll be green if everything is okay, and it will be black if it can't log in or there's no internet connectivity. If it is black, we need to get you logged in, give us a call in the service center if the one in the bottom right-hand corner is black, but the other one is black all the time, and you don't have to worry about that. Thanks for the call, Steve. We appreciate it. We got you in the drawing there as well. Hubert, welcome to the program. How can I help you on Compute This? Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm having problems with one of my uh, online audio-video sources. Uh, YouTube and Facebook work okay, but uh, I'm a subscriber to the Digital Goddess, Mm -hmm. In the last several weeks, when I get online to uh, watch and listen to her program, uh, I don't get any picture or audio to Firefox. Okay. If I go to Edge, uh, there have been times I'll get the audio but no video. 
And I'm wondering, if I got an old computer? Could the source not be pumping out enough? Could my Internet provider not be giving me bandwidth? Could gotcha. I have uh, missed out on an update on a software piece or gotten corrupted by an update on a software piece? Your thoughts? Great questions. Now, um, I, Kim Commando is obviously going to have decent tech running her radio show. I mean, it's a national radio show. Uh, so she's going yeah. to have decent tech running it. But um, I can't imagine it's Flash-based. But if it is Flash-based, that would explain a lot of the problems you're having. But it wouldn't work in Edge at all then. You wouldn't get anything. Um, the other side yeah. of this, too, is uh, if she was having uh, issues where so many people were watching the feed that it couldn't keep up, um, you you would get buffering. So, in other words, you would get, like, freeze frames or, you know, it, it wouldn't just not give you any image or not give you any audio. So the the first the thing that I would do, honestly, is to get get it logged in on another computer and see if the problem persists. So go to a different computer, okay. log in with your username and password, and see if the problem persists. If the problem is consistent on both computers, then it's probably a problem with her source. If it's, I've got one of your Intrepids on order. Should that help? Well, yeah. I mean, that'd be a second computer. The laptop so. is about six years old. Yeah, and we... Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. The, the other thing is, uh, speaking of your Intrepid, we just got a boatload of them in, literally <laughs> into the service center in Papillion. So your Intrepid, she's probably getting cooked up uh, today, yesterday and today here. So we'll give you a call as soon as that's ready for you. I appreciate your patience on that. We usually keep those in stock, but... We just got crushed this holiday season. But, yeah, the Intrepid would be a good way to, to fix that, to, see, to test, basically, to see. Uh, the Intrepid, folks, for those of you who don't know, is one of our mid-range laptops. Um, it's a solid-state laptop, so it's not going to have any performance problems. It's going to be wicked fast compared to your six-year-old computer. And if it doesn't work there, then we know that's a problem with the source. Thanks for the call, Hubert. We appreciate it. Bill, last call of the show. How can I help you uncompute this today? Uh, hi, Thor. Thor. Uh, I use a disk imaging program called Macrium Reflect okay. uh, and do weekly uh, backup images of my whole system. Gotcha. And a function of the, that's included in this program, Reflect, says you can restore an image to new hardware. Okay. And I've read through the manual uh, the user manual, and as long it looks to me like as long as you have all the drivers for the new computer, yep. you know the motherboard and all the cards and whatever, that you supposedly could take a current image of your current PC and then boot the new one from an external drive that has that image and runs the imaging program and then restore it and then as it goes through uh installing it's going to come up and and either blue screen and give you an error message that says you need a disk driver or the program itself will actually come up and look for drivers and i'm wondering if you have any experience with restoring uh, images from an older PC to a newer PC. Gotcha, yeah. The uh, Acronis actually has a really similar uh, feature, uh, but basically what it does is you take your image of your old computer, and when it takes the image, it strips all the drivers out. Because the problem that you have was when you go from one computer to the other, the, the drivers that make the hardware work can be different. And sometimes, especially if you're going from an Intel computer to an AMD computer or vice versa, you can get blue screens and all kinds of problems. So then when you clone the image over, you know the, none of the drivers are present for the new hardware. So if you want the new hardware to work, you have to include the drivers in the package to, to install on the, the new computer. So yes, it is technically something that is done a lot actually, by IT professionals. Uh, it is something, it's a way that we can use in some really extreme cases uh, for customers who have a piece of equipment and software they can't relicense, for example. We've used it in the past to do some of that kind of stuff. Um, it is technically extremely complicated. Um, if you're doing 100 of them, once you get it figured out, it, yeah, it's butter. It works perfect every time. If you're trying to do it on 50 different computers for 50 different people with different individual challenges, it takes a lot longer. Um, it is not a, a simple or perfect thing, even for an IT professional to do. Uh, so I would it'd be a little hesitant to have a home user 
you know, venture out on that journey on your own. Uh, of course, you have some other considerations there too, like your Windows operating system is going to deactivate because Microsoft will detect the hardware change. Uh, your secure updater will deactivate because it's going to detect the hardware change. So uh, a lot of your software, the, the whole objective of doing this is getting the programs to move. And a lot of times when you do that, they fail the the finger the hardware fingerprint and then they don't work anyway. Um, so it's it's a six of one, half a dozen of the other thing. But if you're in an IT environment where you're doing a lot of these things in bulk, it's a great way to do it, Bill. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, golly, folks, you know, this year has just been something, hasn't it? It's been something for everybody. Um, we started out the year in January um, – and I remember I'm, I'm sitting at home and I'm looking at my phone and I'm watching the Johns Hopkins death, uh, COVID. Well, they didn't call it COVID then, but it was the, the pandemic in China. Um, and then I'm reading stories about how 11 million people in Wuhan canceled their cell phone subscriptions in a single month and didn't take up new subscriptions somewhere else. But nobody died in Wuhan. Everything's fine. Uh, and I'm thinking, OK, this is way, way, way worse than what China's admitting. This is I, I didn't foresee the pandemic. I didn't think, you know, well, we're all going to get sick. You know, it wasn't like that. I, what I saw, what I was thinking was, oh, my gosh, this is going to disrupt their ability to produce goods, which is going to find its way through the pipeline to us. And the only variable I couldn't figure out was just how much stuff is in the pipeline. Now we know it's about three months. And then after that, there ain't nothing left. Um, so, yeah, guys, it was nuts. So we went out and took a great big SBA loan at the start of the year to buy a bunch of inventory because I was afraid we would have a shortage. Um, then in April, it turns out we're the only computer store open in Nebraska. This is before we opened Des Moines. Uh, if you wanted to buy a computer in Nebraska, you were at Schrock because the Mart was sold out. Best Buy was closed. Uh, Office Max was closed. Apple was closed. It was nuts. And we chewed through all that inventory that we purchased like that. Which normally would be a good thing for businesses, right? But we don't make money really selling hardware. We make all of our money on services like data transfers, in-home setups, stuff like that. Nobody had time for that. In the third quarter, we sold more webcams than we have in the past 20 years combined. That's pretty nuts. Uh, in August, we opened a new store in the middle of a pandemic lockdown. You know, why not? I was bored. Um, by the end of 2020, we saw two competitors fail. Uh, another one is up for sale. I'm never happy about that kind of stuff. I mean, obviously, from a business perspective, I'm glad it wasn't us. Um, but wow, uh, we designed a new modular enclosure for our new solid, our new hard drives. We're going to have those out next year in 2021, and we added new capabilities to our data recovery lab. So, guys, thank you for supporting us because a lot of businesses didn't have a fan base or a group of people like you to support them. And you are the reason that we're still here and able to do these things. And we're not one of these four, three or four places up for sale. So thank you for doing that. And we continue, we'll continue. continue to do what we can for you. Congratulations, Steve. You're the winner. Stay tuned for the Aftershock. We'll be back in just a bit. Happy holidays, Nebraska, from Super 